Okay, so oh, those are the Great Crusades notes. Different game. <laughs> so, let's have some reminders from last session. Made friends with Merenra, Mary, the Marquep. Katia has a cult now, slash we abducted another village. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. Anaki mm-hmm. is owed an update on local history from the locals. I've done some paragraphs of reading. Adiris undermi- uh, is undermining Nephi Nebti's cult immediately. Which, since Nephi Nebti is currently schlorped, uh, I guess means it's temporarily Adiris's cult. Uh, quah, 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 quah. At least till she gets back. You're off to see the pharaoh, the wonderful pharaoh of Kem. And uh, add Sophie's beats to the shared XP pool, but Sophie's uh, currently not back, so we don't have those yet. The new boat is Nightmare, and your current beats are two. Yeah, we're on 13 XP and two beats. Yeah. So, I believe we uh, ended with the now currently two of you leaving mm-hmm. this benighted village, having drained it of its fittest and healthiest members, not to mention supplies. The day passes in... Uh, Long and I think probably fairly discussion filled haze. The locals want to know everything they can about you divinities. What, uh, well, what will you be telling them? What's the, the yarn you're spilling here? Spilling? Spinning here? Uh, I would tell them the truth about the judges and the way of divinity. Yeah, you are, uh, that's my whole fucking shtick. I was going to say, specced towards brutal honesty. In really every sense of the term. <laughs> oh, dear. So you preach to them fire and brimstone long before fire and brimstone was much of a thing at all. You tell them of the demons and razor sharp glassy, sandy storms of the underworld. Of the nightmare of judgment that they face if they don't live absolutely perfect lives according to the judges of death. Most prominently, your judge, never the flame. Thank you for your sheet, Nicholas. I, um, I have just switched uh, my brawl and weaponry, weaponry around, though. Just, uh, fair. Uh, but <laughs> the, this is a very unversatile character. No, oh, yeah, 100%. I'm not going for versatile, my friend. <laughs> I, I am an angry spirit in a mummy's body. I'm going to do angry things. <laughs> Did you spec for combat? Not really. Though I wouldn't call him a slouch. <laughs> it's uh, uh, difficult to describe. <laughs> if nothing else, he's got strength one, so he's below the human average. But okay. Not- oh shit! I forgot about that being a human average. Yeah. A bold strategy con. But on the other hand. He does have... Uh, oh, no, he doesn't have um, the second one yet. Yeah, so he's not really that spec for <laughs> fighting. But also, he's a mummy and he's got second ten, so he can pump pillar points and just beat the shit out of people as much as he likes at the moment. <clears throat> so. You spend your day terrifying... The new members of your cult. Oh, did we give your cult a name? Not yet. Let's have a look. So they're creative process. It's basically what will form into the Illuminati, so I could always just call it that or something. Yeah, you can call it the Illuminated. Yeah, that'll work. That's perfect. Yeah, like so I don't I don't tell it like as a horror story type thing, I just tell it as simple fact. That doesn't make it um, <laughs> less horrifying. No, of course. But um, 
It's yeah. the uh, spiritual experience of telling a load of uh, five-year-olds the grim horrors of Stalingrad, but not maliciously, just, you know, talking about all the, the cannibalism and on the people freezing to death and, and the, like, hundreds of thousands dead. I'm not sure if that's more scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Just yeah, so yeah. casual about these, these horrific things. Yeah, I know. But the the point is, I'm not trying to make it scary. I'm just stating it as fact because that yeah, is what yeah. it is. It's just... <laughs> I know that makes it more terrifying. Yeah, you know, it's, as uh, it's a point of intent. Adiris yes. puts the fear of the dozens of gods into these poor, benighted locals. Anak Sunamun drifts around the boat. Uh, all right. So, what was the the type of update you were looking for on the history, Nikki? What what information were you hoping to gather whilst Adiris is, uh, you know, scaring Terrifying the him. shit out of people? Yeah. Well, I mean, my whole thing uh, at the moment, my whatever the hell it's called, goal. Uh, uh, decree. No aspiration. Aspiration, yes, aspiration. aspiration. Yeah, my whole aspiration is to work out how the hell this whole thing came to be, uh, from what was. Mm. So that's that's kind of what I'm looking for, really. How this village came to be. Was there anything here before? So they tell you in small bits and pieces. The uh, the tale of, by and large, the, the current ruling class. And it sounds to you like one of the uh, feral societies that lived outside Irem's borders in your time. So, in some long-ago ancient past, the peoples were disunited, squabbling up and down the Great River. And then came... King Scorpion, a legendary figure of myth, who, one by one, united the squabbling townlets of both Upper and Lower Egypt, and forged them into simply Kem, the Black Land. King Scorpion's dynasty died out it's kind of difficult for them to pass this, but uh, what sounds to you like anywhere between a hundred years ago and several hundreds of years ago. And then there were another one, two, maybe three dynasties after that. The current pharaoh has only been ruling for about half a decade. And his name, which I believe I have around here somewhere, I'm pretty sure his name is Unus. Bitch Tits McGee. His name is Wait, not Unus. Unus Arnus. His name is not Bitch Tits McGee. His name is Unus. The Pharaoh's name is Unus Arnus, so. so only his friends call him Bitch Tits McGee. Unus Arnus. Unus Arnus. What is that? Ah, oh, it's Sophie chanting. What's mm -hmm. here? They heard you. She is pleased. <laughs> Ah, so speaketh John, High Priest of Sophie. Indeed. Uh, yes, the current pharaoh, Unus, was the nephew of the previous pharaoh who died childless. Uh, but he's remained uncharacteristically closed up in his capital at Inbu Hedge, far downriver in Lower Egypt. The gnomes, the sort of um, almost like duchies, I guess, that make up the realm of which there's, I think, a couple of dozen, have been reportedly growing restless, and the once frequent tax barges carrying food up and down the Nile have grown scarcer and scarcer of late. The peasants whisper that Egypt, long united, is going to collapse once more. But it's also kind of hard to make out, as a lot of them are, you know, shit scared by the vision of hell and the afterlife that they're getting told by this literal divinity, lecturing at them with neither malice nor pity. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. 
that I think that's going to put um, an Oxenman in quite a a thoughtful mood, I guess. Mm. Um, for the rest of it, because um, she kind of wants to know if the like they can all, I guess, bring back what was, and the fact that uh, the people seem to think that this whole thing may be on the verge of collapse is uh, particularly interesting mm. for her. Because if it is, well, it's an opportunity. So... Fair. Yeah, she's just gonna... She's, she's gonna think about that. See what I, opportunities arise, I suppose. I'm also gonna say that that's, that's definitely working towards fulfilling your aspiration. Take a story beat. Yay. I guess we'll just tally them up at the end of the session. Now we're doing group XP. The boat continues on for the rest of the day, but as night falls, your rowers are thoroughly taken out. And with both Nephi Nebers and Dog Schlorped, you have no option but to stop for the night. The place you pick appears to be naught but the desert sands. Hey, oh no, you'd be right by the riverside actually. So the place you pick, naught but the Nile side mud. I wonder how much of the you know what, let's have a look. How much fertile land either side of the Nile is there? Because I refuse to take Pharaoh as a uh, as an accurate measurement. Yeah, probably enough. So you pitch up for the evening, moored up along the side of the river, having seen very few boats going in either direction, and all of them speeding past you as quickly as they can. Oh, it's... You are outside a a small, abandoned hamlet, at the centre of which is an old stone structure crumbling, dilapidated. It nevertheless, to the two of you, has all the hallmarks of Iramite architecture. Ah, another one. Mary stayed back with the boat. Um... It's alright, he's probably a bit depressed. I did tell him he's been asleep for 1600 years and our civilization's, uh, civilization's been dead for a long fucking time. <laughs> Your bedside manner is lacking. You're not wrong. I've never had my delivery criticized before. So what? This is the first time I've told someone that, but, you know. What do, folks? You stand a small ways from the encampment where your uh, newly ensurfed villagers I suppose now sailors uh, mill and go about cooking their meal and ter- uh, their evening meal in terrified, stunned silence. I shall go and investigate. There might be a record in there or something. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with have a looky loo. Yeah. Uh, I will take an opposed perception roll from the two of you, please. Uh, perception. I feel oh, dumb. I don't wait, do perception don't anywhere. Fucking, God damn it! Sorry, that's all world of darkness. Fuck my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad okay. it's not just me. Uh, in that case, I will take. Uh, uh, wait, what's opposing it? Uh, each other. Wits plus a cult, please. Ick. I've lost two, this one. Two successes. That's that's a tie. Holy shit, I only have two fucking dice. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Fair's fair. The two of you are I guess I already used up all of my luck killing all Mouse Skaven and Blood Bowl earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no bully Mau Mau. Uh, he had funny. like he had like five or six players left at the end of the match, no and bully. in the very last turn, I tied the score. Oh, no bully! 
I wasn't bully. It's Blood Bowl, to be fair. Yeah, that's how you play it's, Blood Bowl. <laughs> we're not dying, mate. Salty. Uh, so, the two of you approach the low, squat stone structure, surrounded by crumbling pillars. Both of you catch your eyes on something. Script etched more recently into the stone around the gateway. As one... You split, each heading for a different side of the gate entrance, and begin devouring the words, the incantations, the spell of something guarding the entrance. You have discovered uh, an Iramite spell. How exciting. You can both uh, activate one of your utterances. Oh, Pog. Uh, oh, I know which one I'm going to take. Palace knows it's Pharaoh. Fair, fair. Oh, Christ, you've got all the tears for that one as well, don't you? Yes. Well, all the bonuses, rather, I should say. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. <laughs> all right, hold on. I'm going to have to find this. What page have I got a note down? It's 142. Uh, hold on, let me. I'm gonna find the book real quick for this. It's fair. Meanwhile, slightly inside the entrance to the tiny, crumbling shrine, unbeknownst to the two, uh, to the two of you, ensconced, enthralled as you are in your tracings of this strange magic. Second begins to flow, pooling out, welling up from the underworld, swirling through the decrepit, sand-blasted corpse left in the very center of the building. It's not a large shrine, no longer, uh, no wider than perhaps six meters in radius, if that and a good deal of it has begun to collapse. Nevertheless, Nizal, for the first time in 1600 years since you were brutally murdered as part of a long-ranging or wide-ranging human sacrifice, your eyes shudder open. And indeed, you have eyes as your corpse form takes on a uh, more pleasant mien. As you have just arisen, your second is at ten, and your memory, temporarily, is at zero. You are an angry automaton, awakening in the darkness, with maximum power and zero comprehension of what's going on, except the knowledge that there's two things, lo- like shadows, looming around the very entrance to your tomb. What to do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of my aspirations is to follow on my emotions slash knee-jerk reactions. I am pissed. I'm going to go kill them. Barely aware of anything, not even your own name. You haul yourself from the uh, cracked sarcophagus in which you were dwelling. It, uh, actually, you know what? You're in a fucking sarcophagus. Uh, what is what's your strength there, young Nicholas? It's one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So, uh... He knew exactly what your strength was. <laughs> he yeah, he did. wanted to make you say it. <laughs> I regret uh, my decisions, but okay. Well, uh, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, do you know what you can use pillar points for? Oh, I don't want to use pillar points to get out of this. Oh, uh, you are currently an enraged boy. Oh, that's... There's one thing I could do to get out of this, but if it's a big old fucking waste... Actually, no, 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 no. It won't work as far as I can see. So, it doesn't work. Like, I can't use my desert thing to get out. You also, also get out. if you're in a sarcophagus, you can't see shit, because it's no. dark as fuck. Uh, you have dark vision. You technically don't have actual eyes. You're sort of... Uh, not a hologram, but if a hologram was made out of um, spirity stuff... Uh, overlaid over your otherwise walking corpse. 
I thought you needed um, um, one of my utterances to have dark vision. Oh, that is true, yeah. Maybe you don't have dark vision. Which is actually why I took it. Maybe you don't have dark vision. Now, now... It's, um... I have... Power of Re. I have a very kind of... This is really bending the definition of transport vehicle. <laughs> As a tomb a technically transports coffin. you to the afterlife. A coffin. No, that doesn't. <laughs> you... And that's proven. You just woke up. No, it fucking doesn't. <laughs> no, it took me there and it's brought me back. You cannot. You never went anywhere. You cannot designate your tomb as, to be fair, the various bits of his soul did. Um, mm, you point. cannot designate your tomb as a mode of transport, not without okay. at least. Like I said, it, staple something it's very to. much a bendy bendy. That is fair enough. I appreciate the ask, um, but I'm going to say no. I think that'll be a pillar point used. Uh oh, because you use the pillar points to augment your stuff, don't you? Physical attribute boost. Once per scene, spending uh, pillar points raises uh, physical attributes by number of dots determined by a mummy's current second rating, which at ten is five per pillar point spent. I guess I'll use an ab. Also, since Nick was suggesting his um, uh, affinity with the vehicles, my new utterance allows me to sense everything in here. Uh, you need to activate it, don't you? I touch the wall as soon as I finish reading. <laughs> it's now active. <laughs> Hang on, let me just read. Uh, I feel I may need to know this one. <laughs> Tier 1 is, as far as I can tell, free. Let's have a look. I don't actually have uh, to spend anything for it. Do, do you know what page it was? Mm-hmm. Palace number 142. Right? Yeah, but you always spend something for. I'm going to activate Rite of the Sacred Scarab. Just a second. This is where I wake up and just spend all my pillar points immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you do need to spend points for these in the because it doesn't say like the next tier doesn't say oh spend a pillar point. I think it's you always spend uh, a pillar point to activate your utterances. Okay, I believe it's a pillar point per per tier. Uh, I think I uh, yes, but not per like scale of tier. So tier two is an no, additional no, no. pillar point, but it's not plus two pillar points. So do no, we, no, no. And uh, you don't have to unleash multiple tiers at the same time, but you can, and they sometimes combo. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I forget how you regenerate them. Uh, regenerating pillar points by fulfilling your soul's decree, and then there's some slightly more obscure versions as well. Okay. Soul's de- oh, yeah, decree. It's like, what's a soul's decree? Oh, the decree. We have regenerating pillar points in here. Uh, right at the Sacred Scarab you were doing as well, did you say, uh, Nikki? Yes. Do, 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 do. Rebuke the Vizier, Relentless Honor, Revelations of Smoke and Flame, right at the Sacred Scarab. But I, I will do tier one of Palace Moses Pharaoh. <laughs> as a spidey sense kicks in, and the two mummies outside sense that something is moving second. One of them, inquisitively, unleashes the uh, utterance that he learnt back in. I remember. Back in Abju. The other, having just learnt her very first. that he learnt? That she learnt. Uh, the other, having just learnt her very first utterance, mouths the words aloud. And immediately hacks up a single... I mean, you get to describe the scarab. What does your protective scarab amulet look like, Nikki? Um, it's one of those um, bright blue scarab that has uh, a pearlescent sheen to the wings to it. Uh, it's not very big, but the little spots on its wings, uh, they look like Almost like little jewels, light blue spots that look like little sapphires. 
a ritzy little scarab. Uh, yeah. I also don't think amulet here is meant necessarily literally, so if you don't want to have it as a necklace, you can have it like sit on your shoulder or something, I guess. Uh, I'll have it as a necklace. So you cough up the scarab and then <coughs> draw the rest of the chain out of your mouth and place it gently over your neck. To the side of you, Adiris, your senses rush to fill the little shrine, and inside, you can immediately feel the arising, awakening form of another mummy. Nizal, you have spent a pillar point. That means all of your um, physical attributes are buffed for the remainder of the scene by a rating dependent on your second. At second 10, that is a plus 5. Uh, you are now at... What is that? I think that puts you at 6 strength, strength. 8 dexterity, eight. Sorry, and 10, ten stamina. stamina. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, you are immune to most things short of a tank. <laughs> um... I I can realize that I may not have a lot of offense. I have a lot of defense. <laughs> For sure. Um. So yes, let's fucking just destroy this. Let's do this, fucking intruders. Not Sarcophagus. in Not in Nizal's <laughs> tomb. A fist lashes out. Second, flowing through your body. The pure energy of life itself empowering you. And the shattered lid of your sarcophagus just explodes in a spray of stone shards and bullet-like fragments. I uh, tear the side of my sarcophagus and just drag it behind me, and I intend to use it as a weapon. Sure, I'll let you roll. Strength plus brawl, please. Uh, Chronicles of Darkness uses a fixed difficulty of 8 or above, but you need to have only a 1 with... uh, You need to have a 1 with 0 successes in order to botch, so botches don't cancel out. Uh, B10 pull system, isn't it? Yes. Uh, So, so is that strength plus brawl, right? Yep. That's 6 plus 3, make that 9... Uh, you put five in brawl, mate. Uh, no, I told you I switched it. Remember, I switched it. To the back oh, three. yep, yep. Sorry, you did. Eight successes. <laughs> Two successes as Nizal lurches to his feet, jerkily, and then, barely able to see, but still knowing where his sarcophagus is reaches behind him, stepping outside it, and with a snap like someone breaking rock candy, snaps the side of the sarcophagus off and starts hauling it, only very slightly slower than you might imagine, behind him. Uh, You're entirely aware of this, Adiris, uh, in uh, blinding detail. You can also feel the pillar point that he's spent, uh, that he is channeling his soul as he comes at you. Uh, mm. I am yelling in rage, just... <laughs> Sister, this one is not happy. Uh, he's also less than six meters from you. The shrine is small. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like a full-on like, yep. corridor to get to the as, as I As I said, it is a six-meter radius. <laughs> oh god, that is very small. <laughs> what do anyone involved? Uh, I'm rushing at the two intruders. <laughs> um, hold on, let me just read my uh, my fucking palace noises pharaoh again, because I'm pretty sure I can just fuck with gravity and make you hit the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you can. I, I think you can. <laughs> uh, I can also change the layout, I'm pretty sure. I think that would be a higher tier. Uh, I think changing the layout is tier 2 and fucking with gravity is tier 3 or something. The other way around. Oh, my bad. Reality shifting is tier 3. Yeah, okay. Rearranging the room is uh, tier 2. Uh, in that case, I'll activate tier 2 and um, fold in one of the walls to just block him off from us. So I'm just reading it. 
a big thick wall. Are you sure that's tier two? Not a hundred percent. Yeah, I think it's no. It's tier tier three is the reality change stuff. Yeah, but I can change the structure on tier two though. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's um, like you can do telekinetic stuff within the thing, and uh, there's the like change the consistency of the structure so you can add and deduct your ability but that wouldn't let you like put a wall where there isn't one it would just let you make a wall much harder or not and he's coming out oh, okay. towards a like an open doorway at the moment so you couldn't put something oh yes sorry yeah, first sentence, oh, yeah. the scarab that i've coughed up did i cough it up at tier one or tier two uh i thought you were doing tier one okay that's fine <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> tier three, a desperate mummy may unleash this tier upon a single doorway, stepping to an unknown destination. Blah blah blah. You can just make the doorway a teleporter and then drop him yeah, somewhere. You could just, <laughs> yeah, I could just make it an infinite corridor for him to the, run down. So the, I'm gonna yeah, do that. Ultimate split the party. <laughs> uh, okay, so so you're unleashing tier three. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Come at me with that shit. I'll just make it so you have to run forever. Okay, you also have <laughs> bar four or above, I believe, which means you can I do. alter fundamental aspects of reality. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm cool. The second surges within you. If you'd like to deduct a pillar point from somewhere, has set the scene for us. Uh, what is Adiris doing? Okay, so as um, this new clearly enraged mummy is fucking sprinting towards us wielding the lid of its sarcophagus uh Sidewall, but yes yes yeah, sorry um adira steps back outside um focuses for a minute and as you look down the corridor it seems to stretch out until you can't see any further and for um and Aksunamun and Indiris looking in, it looks like the person has multiplied, as you can see, down through the corridor again and again and again. And as they get closer and closer and closer, eventually they just teleport backwards to the start of the corridor and just keep on going through and through the loop. And for you, Nick, I guess it just looks like every time you get to the doorway, the corridor just extends out again in front of you. And there's no way you can seemingly break through this. Okay. That yeah, that's fucking bullshit, I love it. <laughs> As he says, I'm afraid. Well, now I'm out of uh, sarcophagus. I, I can see outside, though, correct? You can absolutely see them, and you keep getting really close, and then the corridor keeps extending. I shall scream oh, again. Bullshit. Oh, fucking bullshit. <laughs> unleash third level, my third level. Um, if you'll wrathful desert. If you'll recall, you do not have your utterances activated yet. Oh no! Yeah, you're right. Fuck. Yes, we have to earn our utterances. I've to... literally oh. only just unlocked this. Yeah. Oh god. Okay. Oh shit. So, okay. Um. After the first few attempts, this isn't working. Um. Can I just? I'm not sure how thick the walls are. Can I just storm through the wall? That's a very good question. You know what? There's nothing stopping you from doing it uh, unless Adiris rewrites reality. So I feel like that is an opposed dexterity, right? You want to punch out through one side of it uh, before he is able to change his whims. So we will call that uh, your dex versus his wits, and I think it's probably easier on him than it is on you, so we give John plus one pool mod. Cool. What does the square next to my wits mean? Uh, let's have a look. Does it, I think it's uh, what your like favoured attribute is. It's something to do with uh, pillar point raising bullshit. Okay, it doesn't do shit for rolls. Uh, yeah, it does something, but I don't remember. <laughs> Four successes. That's, on. that's four successes. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> I guess the gods are still on my side. That's that's like a botch as well for me. Uh, no, no it's not. It's one success. Yeah, because the ones don't cancel out unless. Uh, yeah, ones don't cancel out in Chronicles. Technically, they don't in Ward as well, but it's easier oh, to house rule in Ward, so we do it. 
Okay, cool. Uh, yes, that's only one success for you as you react with inhuman speed, going to slam yourself through the wall, and you've made it. The bricks explode outwards in a shower of masonry, and you find yourself. Uh, Adiris, where does he find himself? Back at the start of the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> And so, Just it's funnier, honestly. <laughs> and so begins an extended punching through the walls, punching through the floor, punching through the ceiling sequence, in which Nizal more or less shatters his tomb, and no matter how much he breaks it, he's still at the very start of the corridor. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nick Fool, so this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm, I'm Literally, the see. only thing I'm imagining is the scenes that you always get in Scooby-Doo, where they're chasing the villain and they're going, <laughs> yeah. <"No." laughs> <laughs> I I am I am just going to destroy my tomb. I will destroy the walls, the support pillars, everything. I destroy it all. Yep. Unfortunately, he's got the reality control thing going on at this point. So there's literally nothing I can do. Yeah, he's he's basically <laughs> got you pinned like a butterfly in a case. Like you know how in the third Matrix that. film, when Neo's stuck in the train station and the train man comes along and he's just like, down here, I'm God. That's me right now. <laughs> <laughs> An accident um, woman's gonna, gonna be watching this for pretty much the entire time as this newly awakened mummy just destroys his tomb. Um, and uh, Eventually, she's going to call out to him uh, and just ask um, or just say um, something along the lines of, we're not here to hurt you. <laughs> you, you sure let a lot of smashing happen before you tried to calm down. <laughs> I was it trying was to protect amusing. us. I will take, uh, I think that's probably persuasion. Uh, unless you are here to hurt him, in which case it's subterfuge. Uh, persuasion over presence, please. Uh, so I'll also give you plus one pool mod for like you're you're talking in Iramite, and that does kind of go straight to the brain for him. Nizal still laying about himself. Nizal, smash! It's all. <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> like the reds come down, and he's just full on rage mode. Oh, absolutely! Like you keep hucking the fucking side of your sarcophagus that you ripped off straight at them, and then it keeps like boomeranging back around. And even though it's about to hit them, it hits you in the back of the head. But you're still <laughs> rocking on stamina ten. So really, that does bugger all, other than maybe like chip the stone. <laughs> The thing is, it's... my balance is devoted. My burden is rageful. My aspiration is follow your emotions and knee-jerk reactions. So I'll just keep on going and going and going. I believe that was zero successes for an accident of moon. Yeah, I was about to ask, is it, is it seven or eight for the difficulty uh, thing? eight. Mm. The situation here persists for, well, it probably feels like an unholy amount of time from Nizal's point of view, as he doesn't really have much of a conception of time at the moment, but for the two of you, it's about half an hour before, eventually, the mummy's blind confusion and rage starts to give way to irritation, confusion, and no small amount of exhaustion. Oh, wait, no, what am I talking about? You're on stamina 10. You are still as vibrant and energy-filled as ever. But you're starting to be a little bit more in control of your faculties. Nizar, um, you may consider yourself uh, no longer blindly enraged, if still quite angry. <laughs> what do you want? An accident is just going to raise an eyebrow and just say... Well, if you're finished with your tantrum... You're the ones who came to my home! Nizal has not quite registered uh, the supernatural aspect of the situation yet, nor the fact that this is clearly not a home. It is Aramite, true. 
But this is one of those, one of the very few pieces left, I'm afraid. So if you'll calm down, I'm sure we can tell you all about it. Until then, you're going to be stuck like this. Oh my, I throw the, uh, the side of the stuck officers again. <laughs> Entirely under control that time. It, uh, it almost hits them, and then at the very last moment impacts the back of your head. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the funniest thing I'm imagining. Just <laughs> boomeranging back into your own head. A word mm. rises unbidden, uh, unbidden, unbidden to your mind, Nizal. Ma Kep, you recognize the snooty, authoritarian tone of one of Iram's secret police. <clears throat> we come in peace, brother. We seek information on the Empire. Patently a dumb yeah. question from your point of view, Nizal. Why would you need to seek information on the Empire? Iram is everywhere and always. <laughs> you have just awoken, yes? Yes! You have been asleep for 1600 years. What an incredibly idiotic premise. This is your... Your humble slave hut. Looks decidedly non-hut-like. As you look down at the sort of large chunk of masonry you're holding, you don't remember being able to do that either. Think back. Remember your sleep. Remember the torment. You remember demons and fiends, razor sharp, sandy winds clawing at your flesh, birds of prey ripping your eyes out over and over again, and the howling, angry questions of scornful gods hounding you through an unending eternal nightmare. Behind it all, the vaguest memory of your last night, at least from your perspective, and a single sharp stabbing pain as the ritual knife sank deep, deep into your heart. My rage quite quickly turns to sorrow as I just collapse to my knees, looking down at the ground in complete disbelief. Just jaw agape and speechless. And Axenoman uh, kind of looks a little, a little pleased that the temper tantrum is gone now. Um... <laughs> But she's not gonna say anything to that effect. She's just she just is gonna say, um the world we knew before is gone. We're here to find out why and get it back on track. If it makes her feel any better, she uh she had more or less this reaction the last time she caused deep existential dread in someone as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I'm three for three now. <laughs> um, uh, um, doesn't help. Nick doesn't know much law about mummies, so that's okay. You really don't need to. One, I don't think any of us do. Uh, okay, cool. And two, oh, really? you are playing an amnesiac character, so it is perfectly okay to uh, role play as I don't remember any of this stuff. There's a note in several of the setting guides even that like if you don't wake up in a blind rage, no small amount of mummies without cults at this point wake up and are just incredibly gullible. So they kind of like Clark Kent into society without realizing. Okay. Nice. Um so it's okay to forget basically everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions to ask them either in or out of character. That's fair enough. Um, we have better targets for your rage, brother. We are not the enemy. No, but we shall find out who the true enemy is. And strike them down. And with that, it sounds like you uh, sense that the infinite corridor has been 
at least ever so slightly relaxed Nizal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Diris clearly still has her hand on the wall, but it's <laughs> looking somewhat less intense. I am, um, and a little bit more empathetic. Let the side. Of the, I, I, I uh, let go of the uh, side of the sarcophagus I've been holding, and just quietly stand up. Let us find our true enemies. Then, just Maybe. slowly stumble towards them. <laughs> you may not remember much, but you remember that you had a civilization and that for all the pain it caused you, it was a great civilization. Or it must have been. Why else would you have dealt with all that? And if it's gone um, now, someone needs a punishing for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, as I as I come up to the other two, um, uh, uh, how did he put this? Um, what are you wanting to say? Uh, so along the lines of like basically, we're not, it's like comrades, brother and sister, sort of like we are in this together now. Like you're the last of we are the last of, uh, of our civilization. We are together. Against the world, I, I would feel free to just like more or less. You you can go with that as a grand speech. Uh, fair warning: they're probably going to take the wind out of yourselves a little bit when they point out there's someone else back at the boat as well. <laughs> <laughs> we have discovered three more since we awoke. Good. Our society is not completely gone. My no. memory may have faded, but we have each other. We do indeed, brother. I am Adiris. I am an Niz- actor in a moon. Nizal. Nizal's name flows out of him. Uh, flows out of him at more or less the exact moment that it returns to his brain. Do you want to give us a brief description? What's Nizal look like for you? Oh, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> do you want to so- defer a brief description and we can come back to this sometime or also uh, no, never? I. I- <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do actually have a description. Give me two seconds. Um, I'm trying to remember if we gave descriptions. I don't think. You know, I don't think we did. I don't think we did. Um, All right. Well, in that case, whilst you're doing that, then, you're Nicholas. Uh, Alex and Amun, what do you look like right now? Um, You mean besides the mummy ish? Uh, countenance. <laughs> oh, you're still dressed in your mummy clothes, aren't you? No, she got no. Katia to make her some, like, <laughs> the secret police commissioned plain clothes. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, pretty much. So she's wearing, like, standard wrap. Um, or at least it was standard wrap for, um... 1600 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's true. Um, but yeah, the the death visage also only comes out like whilst you're using uh, an utterance, and only uh, and doesn't apply for John's thing because that utterance has subtle, so it doesn't have to um, unless he wants it to. So because you've already like when you spit the scarab up, you would have uh, imagined like a hologram flickering off, and you can see that oh god, that's a sapient corpse. Uh, and then when you're done, it flickers back on again. Good enough. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's nothing particularly special looking about a Naxxon Moon. She's pretty, pretty average. Um, she's reasonably short, uh, sort of looking at like the 5152 range. Um, well, historical as well, so you'd be even shorter. Jupiter. Would I be shorter than that? Uh, yes. Uh, ancient humans are hilariously, hilariously tiny. Uh, for contrast, way closer to our time period, uh, Edward the First, famously called Longshanks for being ridiculously tall, uh, probably about five eleven. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is my point, though, right? So, a combination of poor diet. Uh, and a lifetime of backbreaking subsistence farming for most, as well as just humans being smaller at this point in history, means that generally they're not like 
tiny, tiny people, but everyone is aggressively short compared to what you would imagine. So, which is also why a lot of um, horses or descriptions of horses in ancient texts describe them as markedly smaller than many breeds nowadays. And partially there's a lot of breeding stuff as well. Okay, so she, she'd be more like uh, 4'11", something sure. like that? Okay. Then yeah, so probably about 4'11", then. Um, she's got straight, long black hair, sort of down to probably the bottom of her ribs. Um, no fringe particularly, it's just kind of swept to the sides. Uh, and her nose... You know how Sherlock Holmes is described as having like a, a hawk-like nose, mm. quite sharp and uh, pointed, and a little protrusion uh, protruding from his face. That's the kind of nose that she has. Um, but yeah, otherwise, there's nothing particularly special about her. She's pretty average-looking. Had to be to blend in. Something I'm sure your master's always found excruciatingly useful. A painfully Indeed. average face causes a lot of pain for the average person. At least when the secret police are involved. Yes. Adiris, would you like to describe yourself? Uh, probably about five eight or something, even shorter. Um, five eight is okay. a giant, for the record. Oh, okay. In that case, like maybe five two then. Uh, sorry, four eight is what oh, I meant. Four eight, right? Okay. Yes. Um, fuck, I don't remember what, what the close cat who made for me looked like. Um. But wearing a fairly basic outfit, nothing particularly outlandish or anything, but somewhat more uh, very function over form. Um, short dark hair, cut no no longer than shoulders. Um, currently has a somewhat empathetic and patient look on her face as she understands exactly what you're currently going through um clothes are made out of lots of well decorated with lots of bone bits of bone uh everywhere because <laughs> that's mostly the material that we had oh and bits of flesh as well i'm pretty sure Katya made these clothes out of as well you could have found other materials you chose not to don't you make it seem like it's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just remembering the what happened before the clothes got made, and assuming that's what they got made out of. That is what they got made out of. I'm not going to say that it's not very iramite to recycle humans into clothing, but... <laughs> Dear. Well, that's what we did. So, uh, yeah, she's currently looking very patient. Um, understanding and uh nizal how are we looking um i just remembered what i have been looking like and it's not pretty um or <laughs> pleasant on the eyes at least uh, you say five eights a giant right yes mm -hmm. so just very tall as in we'll say our terms seven foot so what five six is very tall yeah, I would say very tall, but still probably within the bounds of, like, very tall for your society. Yeah, it's like you have to, look, like, everyone kind of looks up. It's like, oh, um, so, was so I 5'6", very long, lanky, actually quite old, fully almost bolded, like, for just very thin hair, mm. but in a very long beard going down to there. Uh, navel, basically. Mm. It points out. Very flat, thin, but there's lots of it. And so his giant beard, his beard goes all up to his ears and so forth. Think like Santa Claus, but no curls, just very straight beard that goes down to like a Chinese point, but it's like much thicker. Mm. Um, well, especially all hopped up on second, which is pure life juice. Your beard is thick and lustrous, almost seeming to sparkle in the dull evening light. Uh, looks looks quite old, actually. Um, you'd you'd say maybe about uh, probably about eighty or seventy. Mm. Um, uh, quite uh, like that, quite lanky and thin, um, but this imposing presence almost. 
um, and uh, red garbs and nile gnarled fingers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will Dark. say on the on the garb front, I'm afraid you have been oh, locked in a. De- yeah, the other guys had to make their clothes, so you ah, okay. you have like tattered funeral wraps, and probably not that much of those left at this point because uh, <laughs> shenanigans have happened. Yes, um, fair enough, fair enough, and um, large uh, black bushy eyebrow- uh, eyebrows. Mm. So the three of you stand there in the late evening light, all staring at each other. It's been a an awkward introduction, but so too was your last introduction. And indeed, the first time you all met, you uh, the first time the other two of you met, you also almost came to blows. I think. I, don't know, I guess the others are currently slaughtered, so you two didn't come to blows. But you also both awoke in a dark. Fucking ignored my existence. Yeah, that's very <laughs> true. She just literally ignored everything when we woke up. They've been hanging out for the better part of a week at this point, I believe. Oh, well, coming up to half a week, actually. Uh, Alex and Amun didn't tell him her name until uh, yesterday. Wow! (laughs) And and even then, she didn't tell him. She told a member of her guild that they found and he was nearby. (laughs) Okay! (laughs) There's a reason I was a member of the secret police, okay? (laughs) <laughs> Mark up our dicks. We are. Okay. I mean, you're all dicks to one degree or another, but Mark up are especially dicks. Hey, I'm um, just a librarian, man. I just feel like I can put the inspiration of the character's look into chat. Yeah, let's have a look. Right. So, you may actually recognize it. I mean, it's, it's a very old picture, so you may not actually recognize it. Right. Let's have a look. Tension, 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 tension. I do remember it. <laughs> Looks vaguely like one of the characters from Tyranny, honestly. It'd be, I, I just grab art off of Pinterest. Yeah. Perfectly reasonable. So, with the introductions taken care of, the three of you traipse back with the decrepit, old, not quite white haired man behind it, you. It, it explains why his strength is one. He does look very old. Uh, <clears throat> almost naked as well. You <laughs> arrive <laughs> back at the campsite to an odd <laughs> hush amidst your dozens of enlisted villagers. What is it with me having old naked men as characters? You have played <laughs> more old naked male characters than any of my other players combined. It, it happens a lot, young Nicholas. It, it does! This is very strange! Are you just now registering it? Uh, but the it multiple... it's, now, it's, it's now... It's crept past the point of, I can just palm this off, and it's at the point of, ah, this is now notable. I, I have had to run multiple subplots about you getting hypothermia as an elderly naked man. Uh, Not I... getting... <laughs> No, I'm like, glad like, they were resolved in the end. I'm just saying, I, I am curious as to why this is the point where this is... You know what? I'm going to call pace on it. I'm going to call pace on myself. <laughs> <sighs> Flashbacks. Is there something you want to tell us, Nick? Are you into old naked men? No, this hasn't awakened anything in me, so... No. I mean, I didn't say awakened. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to dance around, dance around the point here. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, uh, so you've gone back to the um, camp, have we? Yes. So you've made your way back to the camp where the villagers fall either side of you in an old I, hush. Is my memory? Still at zero. Or is it uh, your memory has crept up from zero to. You're all supposed to be at memory one for this campaign, but we've been letting people do memory three because it's also easier on me. Uh, ah, so I see. I see. I see. You sort of you remember your name. You remember your judge. Like bits about life in Irem. Uh, what your guild is. Like more or less most of the stuff that's on your character sheet and a little bit of the, the, 
yeah, the, the fundamentals to have a personality. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, here you are also introduced to Marenre, another Marquette. Around his neck hangs an amulet, a magical amulet, an artifact of iron. So, uh, if I remember correctly, the it takes the shape of a like golden scarab, which looks. I quite, think that's how you describe it. Yeah, yeah, which looked crudely wrought until you like stare at it a little bit, and then you can see that it's actually multiple tiny, more finely wrought scarabs, sort of mosaic, three D mosaic together to form a larger one. Ooh. How late is it? Are the humans still awake? They're still awake. Um, they're not really sure what the order of the day should be at this point. Uh, but it's like sunset going on for night time. We need to sleep. Uh, you guys don't. Okay. But they do. They were doing the rowing. Mm. So okay. apart from the uh, Iramite structure that we've just found, um, is uh, is there anything else kind of where we are? Uh, there's assorted like areas of I suppose it wouldn't even be farmland at this point because the farmland is near settlements. Uh, you are mostly seeing like marsh, swamp, mosquitoes, the banks, the fertile banks of the River Nile. There's no immediate sign of nearby civilization other than the odd smokestack on the uh, horizon in either direction. What type okay. of thing were you after? Uh, just seeing if there was anything else around and about, basically. Fair. Marenre doesn't seem super shocked that you found another Arisen, uh, nor is he especially interested in speaking to Nizal other than a grunt to try and find out what your guild is, Nizal. Well, I know their secret police, don't I? Yes. Is it, is it, uh, how? Ooh, I don't know much, actually, but I know that they're secret police. What's the like, certain sort of general consensus on secret police? They they good secret police or bad secret police? Uh, like, I would contend that you have a task. <laughs> generally, uh, generally, secret police are always bad. That said, innately, your society was like almost into, like literally ninety nine point nine 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 percent slaves. There were, I think, technically fifty five non slave individuals. Um, you all belonged to the ruling slave castes, the class traitors of their day. So. The secret police uh, helped repress society alongside you, uh, which is not to say that they didn't spy on you, but um, more that you were you were both evil together. But evil together, uh, that that works for me. I'll I'll let them know what killed I'm part of, um, which Sue. I mean. You were a Sumanet, which makes you a necromancer. Oh no, no, necromancer. We were in the end, yes, a shepherd of the shell, priests of the dead. But yeah. So after you uh, reveal that, oh, you're you're a uh, priest, a Sumanet. He grunts at you once more, and then goes back to his introspection, studying the stars. Clearly in no mood for any of this. As we get back to camp, uh, I kind of say, rejoice, children, talking to the villagers. We have found another. <laughs> this, this giant, lanky, very imposing <laughs> old man <laughs> turns around and just glares at them. <laughs> Wrinkly testicles sagging in the night winds. <laughs> <laughs> they look awed, shocked, confused. You. You are not necessarily an impressive figure. You might be considered a remarkable figure, but not in a good way. But even so, 
you are flush, filled to the gills with second. At second ten, everyone can sense an innate vibrancy and life pulsing from within you, which is utterly confusing with the near-dead shell you present to the world. Um, I would like to send clothes, actually. I think it's pretty good idea. <laughs> but I have to... It's the thing, I'm quite... I'm overly large, so I can't just take clothes. I need clothes made. Wouldn't and be unfortunately, it. the person who is good at that is not currently here. Oh, there, yes. Um, Katya actually has um, an affinity that she can just make pretty much anything so long as she has the most basic and rudimentary of raw, uh, raw materials. So, I guess I got all, like a little... That's how she uh, made my outfit. Yeah. I guess I've just got like a uh, a toga kind of dress thing going. Uh, I'll just procure, <laughs> ask some of the villagers. You find the longest one you can uh, and demand it in tribute. It mm. does nothing to disguise certain danglier parts of your anatomy, but does at least shield most of you. It's like a tube top that's like a really short, short, short skirt. You can still see your ass cheeks hanging out the bottom. It, it, it's, uh, was it, 1600 years of sagging? It's been a lot of sag. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even make sense. It would... You'd wrinkle up over time like a razor, but the visualization my... <laughs> gets worse the more I try to apply logic. My, my tomb was slanted slightly, so the gravity pulled down <laughs> slightly. What's that Garth Marenghi line about a couple of marbles in a hiking sock? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. The sock was like made out of silk and it was a little bit hairy. <laughs> Just like the lines. So, I believe you all would be continuing on to Inbu Hedge. But, as we've only got 20 minutes of sesh left, what do. Uh, is there anything you fancy doing either tonight or along the rest of the journey to get there? There's not too many. I think two major cities along the way, but at the same time, stopping in a major city. Uh, might have upsides and downsides given the state of your transport. Um, after seeing the um, is it a relic that what's his face had, it is indeed them? it is a relic. Um, I'd like to see if I can ask about rumors and so forth of other relics or similar tools of power. That is an inordinately good question. Uh, I need to read something very quickly. Uh, Role play amongst yourselves for just a moment. No. <laughs> uh, I think Anak Cinnamon would like to stop at l- least uh, one of the major cities because I think uh, she wants to start uh, getting her own cult together. Her little information posse. Adiris is more than happy to do the same. She also no requires rush. more recruits. I require information to gain more power. Mm-hmm. Uh, please continue. I'm I'm reading some stuff. Uh, let's say um, Nizel probably takes a bit of a let's say a liking, but an interest to the boat. I know it's a bit awkward because the person who crafted it hit, crafted it has been schlorped, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to just do the old. My, my you affinity. can steal the boat in her absence, honestly. That's what she gets for slurping. <laughs> I, I, I feel bad. It's like something like you made. I, I chose a chariot thing as like a fun group thing that I can do she's, for us. She's got a I pet th- hippo. It's fine if you want to take it. It's also fine if you want to wait for her to be back and and then do it right in front of her to her face. <laughs> I mean, I, either way works. I don't think she'll mind too much as long as she gets to keep her hippo. Her hippo was the one thing that she wanted more than any. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, honestly, I, I, the I would... boat wasn't even our boat. It was just one that we fucking destroyed and then she just recrafted. Yeah, technically it's Mary's so, boat. Yeah. Uh, just just was trying to forward. I'd be happy taking it now, but as long as if 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 they don't she doesn't if she's not comfortable with it, because I don't like like player wise, like no, I really wanted it. 
Um, but uh, otherwise, I, I'm I'm happy to possess the boat. I mean, sir, do so now anyway. All the villagers are tired. Um, I I'm fairly sure Katya won't mind, but if she wants, you can always just unpossess it next session. That's very true. Uh, so for now, let's possess a boat. Uh, <laughs> kind of like walking up and down it. I do it slowly, just like over like several hours over the night, and just like tracing my long fingers along certain elements of it, uh, weaving my um, secum into it and entwining it with mine. Uh, just slowly. <laughs> okay. So uh, just for reference, then. Artifacts, uh, be, uh, items of magical power, spells even, are purported to exist at most of the major temples, at least according to the locals you took on. Uh, the two of you who came from Abju know that that's gotta be at least somewhat false, as you woke up in a, in a place with a bunch of temples, and, uh, they didn't seem to have shit unless they were hiding it somehow. Which they did not seem inclined to do. So you might need to investigate a little bit. That said, you are not very far at all from Per Wadget. You should reach it uh, tomorrow morning, probably. Shortly after setting off. Uh, per Wadget is one of the... You know, I'm going to have to move the input down a little bit. I haven't quite got the space to position it. Uh, yeah, Per Wadget... Uh, Pearl Wadget is one of the larger cities on the Nile. Uh, it is dedicated to Wadget, a cobra goddess, who is essentially like a bodyguard slash vengeance goddess, according to my splat book. I question the veracity of that, but you know. Um, Pearl Wadget is reportedly noted for being a sprawling metropolis by the standards of the day. Uh, that specializes in wine and uh, apiary work as well. So I guess they have honey. They might hypothetically have something like me. Uh, it's built around a lake and not just the Nile. So it's less dependent on seasonal flooding compared to other areas, which means it's able to support a larger population for a whole host of reasons. Um, it mostly has the obviously it's got a variety of uh, temples, but the temples to Wajit are the largest. Uh, it's also supposedly a good city in which one can find potions, poisons, and practitioners of the secret subtle arts. That seems like a good place to investigate. Let's go. Mm. Yeah, I'll well, probably do it start next session. Nizal. And then we will prepare our journey for that. Yes. Yeah. Nizal uh, eventually leaves the rest of you, the other three. Mary isn't really wanting to discuss much, just stare into the sky. The villagers have died back. Many of them begun to find spots to sleep in for the night. And Alex and Amun and Adiris seem to alternate between lapsing into silence and talking, plotting, planning, but with Anak Sunamun completely unwilling to do anything more than the bare minimum to provoke Adiris to keep talking. Instead, Nizal moves over to the boat. You're all pretty confident he can't crew it by himself, so there's no danger of him stealing it. Nevertheless, he spends perhaps an hour or two walking up and down it, tracing his fingers over the teeth that line its sides for trim, memorizing the patterns of the lacy veins worked into its sail, and binding its rough-hewn clumps of dry reed and papery human skin together, and examines the stains on the deck where the completely nameless and strangely resilient hippo of some sessions past that replaced hippos called dog no dog is called dog uh dog is currently schlort along with neferet nepti wonder dog <sighs> not wonder dog <laughs> wait does that mean this is wonder hippo it's complicated he was a dog in a past life who was called hippo and now, and now he's a hippo called Doc. 
So he is a wondrous dog. Yes. <laughs> I can hear. I can hear the rage from here. <laughs> <laughs> So, as the details of the boat enter your mind, Nizar, you feel something deep within you click. This, this boat is no mere boat. This is a mighty, almost celestial chariot. This is your chariot. You have attuned yourself successfully to the nightmare boat. Uh, now benefits from your affinity until such time as you release it. Or it's destroyed. Like the idea, like, once it's done, it's like, I take a deep breath and sigh, and, like, the boat creaks as well, like, the kind of tightens up with... Oh, absolutely. Responding to your emotional state. Uh, also does put a lie to the idea that you couldn't steal it. Uh, the boat now acts on your command. It will row and or sail itself. Insert evil laughter here. <laughs> <laughs> what you trapped? Here you're cackling from here. You, the two of you trapped him in a reality bubble earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Who's just, protecting us? He possesses one boat, and you accuse him of being evil. He didn't even make the nightmare boat. I was, I was full on prepared to whack them with that tombstone until I got memory back. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the standard reaction, to be fair. You're kind of encouraged to go on a bit of a Frankenstein's monster rampage. One of the like yeah. major specialist skills that a cult has is the ability to have a decent shot at reviving their mummy without the mummy going kill crazy and murdering everyone. But even that doesn't always work. <laughs> not that we're looking at anybody in particular well we'll see um, <laughs> so I know we've got about seven minutes but I feel like we've reached a very natural narrative stopping point yes. yeah that works I do spend most of my time on near and on the boat now yeah it's, it's, it's your boat it's Boaty McNightmare face <laughs> That's a good name. I like it. it it's I think it, it's also gained an extra three durability. Yep, it's as much as Nikki's magic scarab has in total. Wah, 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 wah. So reminders for next session. Anyone? Uh, anything? Anyone wants noted down? Uh, we're stopping at Per Wajet. <laughs> Yes, um, and that we're doing it to try and find information and artifacts. Yes, uh, and I want to try starting my cult there. Fair, fair. Anything else? Uh, Nick now has the boat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> it's like walked in like that's mine now that's a cool thing I've had that now <laughs> I feel really bad about that actually I think it's fine I'm sure she'll find other hapless peons to maim and then forge into some kind of tiny pair of booty shorts for the hippo I give her ideas <laughs> I, 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 I she might listen to the though. episode that's true disregard the corpse sorry catch it as I was looking at the affinities, I just saw it. I was like, oh, this works too well. <laughs> no, it's a really cool one, actually. It's a good call. It also gives you Harry Potter night bus powers of it doesn't crash unless you want it to crash. Well, it, like, if I summon it, it crashes in front of me. So I have this image of like someone just displeases me and I just summon the boat on top of them. Gods, can you imagine that doing that in the middle of fucking Pharaoh's palace? Just, just a corpse boat crashes on top of you, goes plum, and then reforms around you. <laughs> it's the tiny lines of individual dancing teeth that would freak me out the most, I think. Uh, any any other reminders for next session? Um, um, oh yeah, to make sure that everybody that missed out shares in on the uh, story beats and XP that we get. 
Yeah, so that'll be add Sophie's at, at beats the shared XP pool again then. And Katya's as well, because Katya missed out this time. Yeah. Anything else? I'm going to ask if I anything for my, my ragey rage moment. I th- think... I think that's that everything I, for reminders. I think that gives you willpower, yeah, Nicholas? But it was excellent roleplay, and I do lord it. Uh, okay. Um, for story beats, I think you set aspirations. They're in the bottom... But that was my aspirations as okay, well. Okay, all the power... Follow my emotions slash knee jerk. Well, you know what? You did follow your... <laughs> you know what? Fair enough. And I didn't even have to nudge you for it. Uh, everyone else took a bit of a, no, don't you be a good person. You come from a shitty society, behave in a shitty way. But you let straight on him. You know what? Yes, you do. That'll be a story beat for you, young Nicholas. We're, we're, doing, we're doing shared XP, so whenever anyone gets a beat, everyone gets a beat. Because uh, otherwise it got weirdly... Not competitive, but like both glacially slow and um, oddly disconnected. Oh, okay, okay. So, I think Nikki got to beat this session as well. I yes. did. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So two. Which puts us on... Four beats. Yeah, four okay. beats and 13 experience so far. Is it really 13 experience? I thought it was one experience. I've got 13 written down. Are you sure some of that's not excess experience left over from Jen? Yes. I didn't leave any left. Oh, I didn't use any for Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, I, just did, Nick. I did the like, oh yeah, you get to put nine in here and seven in here and so forth. Yeah, Nicholas, I love you. I've roleplayed with you a number of times. I'm in no way surprised. <laughs> I'll have to go add that XP. Um, cool. Cool. I woke up really decrepit and now I'm just like in the morning I just like filled out a little bit. I mean, yeah. Uh, feedback: anything you liked, anything you disliked, anything you'd like to see more of or less of next time. Um, I liked my rage moment. <laughs> I like the rage moment. Yeah, the rage moment was fun, and um, I really enjoyed reacting to it that way as well, and it playing out like that. Yeah. That yeah. was hilarious. Yeah, I'm really loving getting to see some of the powers in action and like starting to ease into the setting a little bit more. At, at least on my end, I feel like I'm starting to get how the rules and things click together. There's obviously mm-hmm. minutia that I get frustrated with, and I still think the whole thing is way too interconnected. But it's starting to get there, which is nice. Uh, I think Sophie and Katya are going to be a, a, a little myth. They miss the shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the infinite corridor, yeah. They can listen back. <laughs> It'll be fine. I'm sure that won't be the last infinite corridor I get someone stuck in. Uh, quite. <laughs> yeah, I can, just see, I can just see you doing it to the pharaoh when we get there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> just fucking gravity him up to the ceiling and then smash him down to the ground. Sorry, whose palace is this? Because <laughs> it's not fucking yours. <laughs> so... Because one of uh, my utterances, uh, it is the utterances, right? Yeah. Um, because one of my utterances is also uh, Palace Knows It's Pharaoh or whatever mm-hmm. it's called. Um, oh, you took it too? Yeah. <laughs> um, a it's a very good one. What happens if John and I use it at the same time? Uh, I think like, you do... do we just battle it out for the palace? Uh, yeah, you do clash of wills versus each other, which I think... I was looking this up earlier, uh, because I thought you might do that. Um, <laughs> clash of wills is... Each player rolls his character's uh, second plus rating in the appropriate pillar using a defining pillar if the pillar, uh, using your defining pillar if the pillar is unclear. So for that I think it would be was that your bar or your ab? I can't remember what my defining pillar is. I really should remember this. Uh, because it was for the third tier. So palace knows it's fair. Oh, the third so, tier was bar. Okay, okay, yeah, so bar. So um that would be for both of you I think like bar plus what are you on second eight now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, which is hilarious because uh, it's it's X plus power stat for other supernaturals as well, but most of their st- theirs only go up to five, uh, which I kind of love because it means they have a decent chance of doing something against an Arisen, 
but by and large any kind of recently arisen arisen is going to just smack the shit out of stuff and go ha you're a vampire <laughs> no that does not mean you're immune to shit unlucky bitch gravity still hates you for sure Man, it would really suck if the uh, tomb that you were sleeping in just didn't have a ceiling anymore. <gasps> oh, look, it's gone! <laughs> Nothing stopping you. Arisen are great. I love Arisen. They're they're so dumb. <laughs> I'm, now, I'm now starting to realize that. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. Um, I've got a question, actually, yep. about my pillar, or the pillar that I spent. Yes. And regaining pillars. Um... Oh yeah. As, for, for the record, remember to note both permanent and temporary down on your sheet. So top yeah, I, 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 I have done that. Cool. Um, um, but for me, it's after any scene in which the uh, stalwart—that's me, I guess—overcomes uh, a challenge by tearing away extraneous details and breaking the issue down into basic essence. I've been resurrected. I'm several thousand years in the future. The challenge of getting over this and around this is just pure rage and then just you're what's left. Let's go. Mm, I see where you're coming from, but I also do think it's a little bit of a reach. I'm going to ask you to call me odds or evens. Odds. No, evens. Odds, I'm afraid. Ah. What is it we have to do to replenish our pillars again, exactly? So there's a bunch of static ones, but also you get one per what your defining type is. So what is your defining thing? Defining thing for what specifically? Uh, your soul. What What is your head type? Are you bull-headed, falcon-headed? Oh. Uh, falcon. I'm a falcon. Falcon. Cool. So regaining pair of points. Uh, pair of points? Pillar points. Uh, the Dauntless regains one pillar point of her choice after any scene in which she chooses to mentally or physically challenge herself. The challenge must contain some risk of failure, but she regains the pillar point even if she fails. It's not too bad, actually. What are you, Dickie? Yeah. Um, I actually have no idea. <laughs> oh, you're Usheb. I want to say yeah. that's the jackal-headed? Uh, it will be on the name of one of your affinities. Oh no, it's Serpent Headed. Uh, Nuance wraps names in layers of secrets for the Usheb to unravel one at a time. The Cunning regains one pillar point of her choice after any scene in which she uncovers an unknown historical truth or proves the mind's superiority over the heart and the body. That's destroying things with facts and logic! What the shit? (laughs) Oh no. Mickey Shapiro. (laughs) He has unlimited pillar points, apparently. <laughs> I will say the historical truth probably does have to be like uh, a historical truth rather than you discovering some new piece of historical knowledge that's only new to you. Uh, so, like, if I discover some forgotten scroll somewhere yeah. that recounts a, a battle or something like that. Or, like, reveal the hidden twist or some other, like, aspect of history. Like, ah, did you know that actually the pharaoh's mum was an ocean carp? Then that would be revealing a historical truth, uh, you know, for a given value thereof. Uh, But not just learning about, oh, dynasties and such. Fair enough. And what's Sophie? I don't have Sophie's sheet up at the moment. Owl. I don't think I do. No, I don't. Uh, yes, and would f- Oops, sorry. Would mentally challenging myself be try uh, figuring out uh, how to stop the fucking raging barbarian from killing us in uh, such a short time? I don't think so because you didn't choose to do that. <clears throat> uh, that was thrust upon you. Fair enough. So if it was like you could have avoided it and you chose to go back and do it anyway, then that would count. Okay. I guess that's reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> what are the other ways you can get pillar points back? Sorry. No, it's, it's quite alright. I mean, it's best we have these conversations, right? Uh, okay. <clears throat> pillar points. Uh, so, affirming your decree, that's what we just talked about. Um, 
invested cultists, which I always hate that they use that as an example because that's you put a pillar point inside a person for storage purposes and you can draw those back afterwards, but they don't count towards your limit whilst they're in the person. So the idea is if you have a cult, then you can like spread pillar points amongst the cult, which empowers them to do shit, but also you can draw them back over time. And it's just so much maintenance and I'm not a big fan. Uh, sound like it, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it we does sound a bit like a pain, honestly. I'm not saying we won't do it, but let's like keep that to a minimum. <clears throat> uh, I, I, yeah. Investing a cultist because you want to give them a boost, cool. Investing cultists because you want to farm pillar points efficiently, I don't think I can be asked. I don't think any of us can be asked. <clears throat> um, life web. So that's as long as your tomb has at least one relic attached to its life web. It's magic geometry juice a mummy receives their tombs geometry in pillar points at the start of each chapter that's like a gaggle of scenes together eg yeah. we're in like the opening chapter of the chronicle at the moment yeah yeah uh, and then there's two remaining uh, meditation once per chapter a mummy may spend a scene in meditation taking refuge in her memories and sense of self uh, you roll your memory as a dice pool and each success provides one pillar point of your choice you can't use willpower, but if you add, if you meditate in your tomb, you add its geometry rating to the dice pool. Uh, and finally, cannibalizing vestiges. Those are like not relics, but they have some magic relic juice in them. Uh, cannibalizing because it destroys them to do it, and it's considered uh, less than ideal. <clears throat> But way more acceptable than cannibalizing relics, which is uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, bad, bad. Just sounds like the the like guaranteed redoable way of getting them back easily is to do it with your decree thing. Uh, yeah, more or less. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. Any other feedback? Mm, not for me. Uh, it, it was just a really cool session. I really enjoyed the way you introduced Nick's character. Thank you. I, Same. I really liked everyone going about that entire sequence, if I'm honest. The like crazy use of utterances, the uh, Nick running into things uh, with just hitting the ground running, essentially. Uh, mm-hmm. Literally. Morning. Yeah, exactly. Was Very literally, literally at some points, yeah. <laughs> Lovely time. I'm looking forward to doing the stabby stabby intrigue, uh, weird magic-y stuff in Per Wadget next time. Probably spend a couple of sessions there just uh, dicking around and getting into the skin of things a little bit. It uh, should be a lot of fun. Hell yeah. Cool. Questions? Anything anyone was narratively unsure of in that session? Is everyone following the plot? Uh, pretty effectively. Yeah. I think so. I think I'll, I'll adapt to it, because I think I'm coming in halfway through, so it's like, who is this This NPC? Okay, cool. They're, they're just a thing. Okay. He's, uh, he's, he's essentially the same character as you, uh, but yeah, to give you a bit of catch up. So we woke up in a town further up river, um, figured out when we were and roughly where we were, mm. um, decided we're going to go and see the leader of this land to see if they know shit or not. Uh, got ourselves a boat, got on the river. As we were going down river, we uh, saw this fancier boat sailing along so we closed in on it he attacked us we defended ourselves we then attacked him uh we kind of destroyed his boat and kind of pissed him off and then we're like hey 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 chill man it's us basically the same way we did to you uh and he was like oh yeah i I like nikki's character she's like me and has just kind of joined us and we're all going to see the pharaoh together and that's about it, honestly. That is about Pretty it. Pretty much, yeah. He also got really depressed when I told him that it had been 1,600 <laughs> years since he died. <laughs> and he is the third character that happens to. <laughs> we like call it causing existential crises here. Uh, so, what, so I'm the fourth, then? <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Just the way you ended it, like, we're all going to see the pharaohs, like, we're all going to see the wizard? Yeah. More or less. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> So, That's why literally the reminder for this session was we're off to see the Pharaoh, the wonderful Pharaoh of Oz. The, <laughs> the Pharaoh in your day was the one non... Uh, 
from your point of view, they were the supremely human necromancer priest kings of Iron. But the actual rulers were... Uh, in the lore, they're essentially implied to be starspawn. They're, they're kind of um, fish people... They are to the judges as the fish people of Innsmouth are to just Cthulhu. Um, is the implication, at least. And the un- oh. the only human who is not technically enslaved is the uh, pharaoh of Irem, in their society at least, uh, who is the nominal ruler of the society, but in practice has actually zero power. He is sacrificial, and his purpose is to be ritually sacrificed once a year. And, and you know, that kills once them. Once a year? Yeah, they, that kills them, and then they pick a new one. I was I was actually going to ask: Do we get new pharaohs after that, or do we just kind of kill one and then he no, comes back? Um, you you for, kill for a horrible thing like we keep like we're about to keep doing for the rest of eternity. <laughs> no, it's um. <laughs> so I'm not sure how fast you guys are about spoilers for the meta plot. Uh, nah, not so. Go for it. The Starspawn involved do this to their gods. He says like, "Hey, I'll be your king," and then they get a good idea in their heads, and that good idea is. I, they convince themselves through a complicated series of bullshit reasons that it would be a smart move to murder God. If that sounds dumb, it is. They are dumb. It uh, makes no, perfect sense to me. <laughs> they have a long-term plan whereby they're going to like usurp the judges of death in the underworld, and step one of that is to raise their God up to be king of the underworld by killing him, making him a God who is dead, thereby outranking the other gods. It does not work. Or if it does, it doesn't work well. Or if it does work well, it doesn't work in the way they think it's going to work. Um, and they they sort of continue to fuck up repeatedly thereafter. Like they're they're told, you know, make a just society, and Irem is what they come up with. Uh, they're basically immense fuck ups. It's quite. I like them as incredibly flawed and idiotic characters who are struggling to deal with the fact that they're basically not people, but they're trying to both ape and govern people. Uh, yes, interesting guys. Anywho, uh, having had such great success killing their god the first time, they then kill him repeatedly in the form of the pharaoh, who is the bodily incarnation of their god. It's... Uh, it's also pretty dumb. They don't really learn from their mistakes. Uh, nor do they abandon the plan to usurp their gods. And it probably doesn't work, but if it does, it doesn't go well for them. That was also why you guys were created. You were supposed to be the their immortal servants in the underworld, like being sent back to fuck with the earth so that they can skive off and not do any work and still outsource it to their slaves who they would send back to do their job every now and then. Um... It doesn't work so hard that they erase themselves from time and space, question mark? <laughs> Unclear. Impressive. The actual time travel mages in the setting that can otherwise rewrite human history can't rewrite the shit around Irem is how hard they fuck up. Um, it's, it's a scene, man. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Uh, no. no. Cool. In that case, where are my mummy notes? Uh, then that will be an extra beat for the session. And that brings us on to everyone's favorite part of the session. It's the highlights. Nikki, do you have any highlights for that session? Uh, I'm probably going to take everybody's favorite highlight for this and go Infinite Corridor of Doom. Anything else? Uh, I liked the um, I liked the idea of just yeeting the coffin or the sarcophagus. <laughs> like mummy immediately awakes and decides I'm gonna yeet this sarcophagus and it's the best idea I've ever had. <laughs> oh, smash! Oh. I, I pretty love, much. I love mummies waking up in a Hulk rage, just smashing shit <laughs> around them. If you hadn't come, uh, if you hadn't actually turned up, John, then I was going to do a flash forward section, 
uh, and I asked them for suggestions, and, and Nikki in a panic said, uh, 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 Sherlock Holmes, Victorian London. It's going, <laughs> oh my God, excellent, yes. You're going to wake up in the British Museum and go on a Hulk rampage. This will be fun. <laughs> oh, that was, that's such a cool idea. I mean, that's half the fun so of, fun. that's half the fun of Mummy. You're supposed to be, like, in first edition, you could do these flash backwards infinitely. So if you were really stuck at one point in the story, you would do a flash backwards as everyone has a bit of a senile moment and remembers a bunch of stuff that would then advance the plot retroactively. So you'd go, oh, we're really stuck at this point. Okay. Flash back to that time we solved this problem in the past and then bring those skills and experiences to the future. Uh, and then for second edition, they've just, disconnected mummies from the flow of time altogether so you don't experience time in order you might rise here for the first time in 2400 bce uh and then your next time is in the year 2000 ce and then after that you arise in 100 bce again uh and from your perspective these are all linear and it's kind of questionable the degree to which you're hopping between timelines within reality uh it's it's quite fun. So flash forwards are now also pretty viable because who's to say we're not already in one long flashback? Dun dun dun. That's so cool. Yeah, it's a really neat idea. Um it also makes mummies terrifically casual about that type of thing in a setting where it's really serious business for all the other splats, which I quite like. Uh any other highlights, Nikki? Uh, no, I think that's it from me for now. Cool, cool. John, do you have any highlights of that session? Well, since Nikki's taken mine, I'm going to have to go with the dangly old man balls. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Um, oh, fuck, yeah. Uh, explaining to the cult the horrors of Irem and just as a simple fact and them getting more and more terrified and horrified. And me just going, yeah, it's cool, huh? This is what civilization's supposed to be. <laughs> Fucking Marge Simpson meme holds up but iron potato. I just think it's neat. It's neat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. Dude, uh, anything else? That, that is all I can think of at the moment. Cool. Young Nicholas, do you have any highlights for that session? Let me smash. <laughs> I'm going to rephrase it slightly because it looks weird written down. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're my highlights. I can hear how, it's, I can hear how you're rephrasing it they're from. My, they're my and I think it should stay. They're my highlights, and I'll censor them if I want to. Coward. <laughs> it's, uh, any of the highlights, here, Nicholas? Um. <clears throat> uh. Um, well, uh, I want like my boat now, but I don't want it to be like I don't like the out of context nature of it. It's like I'm taking this boat. I hope it's okay. Okay, I think I've very sensitively put down the gist of what you're trying to say. And yes, <laughs> um, no, I think that's fine. Okay, and then on my end, I'm going to say I really liked, uh, I know we've had the sarcophagus lid, I really liked snapping the side of the sarcophagus <laughs> off to use it as a club like it was rock candy. Mm, that's a good <laughs> one. Because <laughs> well, I feel like I have smashed the thing into lots of small pieces. I want big piece to take the side of sarcophagus off. Uh, does anyone have a, a better phrase? Because I, I agree with the phrasing, but I feel there's a better way to uh, say it than the Marquette was a stone cold bitch. Nope. That's perfect. <laughs> Just the. Nikki goes from completely silent to, ah, the subject is restrained. Right, cracks knuckles. <laughs> Allow <laughs> me to school you, son. <laughs> No, the Marquette is a Stone Cold Bitch is honestly perfect, in my opinion. It's not my Marquette, though, so... It works for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's the truth. <laughs> I also really like the draw on the utterance roll, because that was going to be competitive. Well, it was supposed to be competitive. Only one of you would get it, but that's like, ah, oh, well, I guess if we drew, they were both good rolls, so fuck it. 
Yeah, that oh, draw was genuinely funny oh. because I only I literally only had two die. <laughs> um I have got another highlight actually. Oh yeah. Um Get out of my home. It's not your home. <laughs> get out of my home. <laughs> this isn't your home anymore, boy. <laughs> For what it's worth, yeah, Nicholas, those uh, spells that can be found, those are consumable as well. So once the like meaning and magic is gone from it being comprehended once, it becomes useless for people thereafter, uh, which means it was meant for you, and they stole it. <laughs> Wait, what? I, you don't know this in character. I'm telling you out of character. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. But what, what was stolen? What was the one used thing? Uh, the spells. The, yeah. yeah, so the the writing on the side of the tomb when we showed up and read it and got our utterances unlocked, that was intended for you to learn. <sighs> but we got there while you were still breaking out of your sarcophagus, so we just read it and went, oh, cool, new spell. And now no one can learn from it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd say I'm sorry, but out. I'm honestly not. I'd better not find that out. <laughs> I'm fighting one of the rage. <laughs> They'd you want to go back in the infinite corridor? Because I'll put you back in the infinite corridor. You do need a building for that. <laughs> eh. I'm sure I'll be able I to find like one. feel like this ends with you getting crushed by a nightmare boat. Though I guess you can always <laughs> reflexively spend pillar points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you a supernatural stamina 10 slap fight? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have strength as well. It's... More than him. Yeah. Be some true. Egyptian anime bullshit right here. And I'm uh, there, just like sitting like a tank with like all my buffs and stuff. <laughs> this, this, this old man. Oh my god! I've made another old man that doesn't die when he should die. Uh, yes, yes, you have, young Nicholas. Some might say <laughs> you are ever so slightly typecast. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for a very entertaining session number five. Does anyone have any final words for the recording? Hot wallet.